Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the F-4 Phantoms uh, mods radar and AIM-7 Sparrow missiles and how to use them. So let's get into it. The Phantom has a pretty crude radar by the standards of most other DCS aircraft, but that also makes it very simple to use. So I'm going to turn on active pause here and we'll take a quick look at the missile selector and then have a look at the other controls we need. So the missile selector is this panel right here, and its main feature is a knob in the middle, this right here. And that knob, when you right click it, rotates clockwise. It has a light or position for each station on the Phantom that can carry missiles, and it has this bottom position here which selects all of those stations all at the same time. AIM-7 Sparrow missiles are fired with precedence, so if you have AIM-7 Sparrows and AIM-9 Sidewinders on board, then the Sparrows will all fire first, so you have to manually select the Sidewinders if you still have Sparrows on the jet, and you need to shoot a Sidewinder for some reason. So for AIM-7 Sparrow usage, easiest thing is going to be to just set the selector to all. Now with that out of the way, let's have a quick look at the controls we need. We're going to need weapon release. And under sensors we need toggle radar on and off, target lock obviously, target designator up, right, left, and down, and we also need predicted target range decrease and increase. With all of those controls bound, we can now have a look at the radar itself. So when I press the radar toggle, then this display shows up. And this is the radar display, so let's have a quick look at what the symbology is for this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see. So we've got our TDC here in the middle, these two vertical bars. This bar down here is our aircraft. And then we've got these two numbers next to the TDC, which are very, very useful. I'll explain those in a minute. And then we have these weird numbers up here on either side of the top of the radar scope. And what those are are degrees off nose measurements. So our center line extends vertically through the radar scope and if you measure an angle off of that right here that's going to be 15 degrees and right here it's going to be 45 now I'm not quite sure what this number is for but these two numbers here tell you two things. The upper number here, which is currently a 5, tells you the range that the TDC is actually at. So the TDC is moved out halfway on the scope to 5 nautical miles. The bottom number tells you the maximum range that the scope is looking out to right now, which is 10 nautical miles. Predicted target range increase and decrease keybinds will change this. So if I zoom out a bit so that I can actually see what I'm doing, because that's what you have to do with this unstable phantom flight model, I'll take off active pause, and if I change the predicted target range, then you can see it went up to 20. I can back it off to 10, and that's as low as it goes. So with that out of the way, I'm going to slew the... TDC over to one of these bandits and hopefully get a lock on on it. All right, I'm going to have to come around for another pass. And that's why so, back off there in the distance were some Russian transport aircraft, and I was just too close to really get a good lock on those. So, we'll continue this turn, 
now that I've hopefully gained enough distance and try to point back at where they are. So we'll level out to prevent excess target motion. And I'll try to lock this one up. There we go, got him locked. And now I have to set up my missile, so I'm going to set this to all. Press weapon release, and Fox 1. And that's a hit. Good hit. Good hit on one. So now I'm going to switch to the Sidewinders. And just for fun, we're going to try to, whoops, try to deal with this other transport aircraft right here, this other AN-26. So the Phantom has access to two air-to-air -air missiles, the AIM-7 Echo and the AIM-7 Foxtrot. Whenever possible, I recommend using the Foxtrot because the Echo is so bad. Let me see if I can find him. There he is. Fox 2. And Splash 1. That's actually Splash 2, never mind. Alright, that's going to do it. And the reason I showed the Sidewinder shot was because you don't actually really use the radar, at least in my understanding, with the Sidewinders. The Sidewinders are just put the pipper over your target, and the Sidewinder will get a lock on its own. It doesn't really interact with the radar. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you think I've earned it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.